Praise the Lord, everybody. I've got a Bible study for y'all today. I'm going to get into the finale of my deliverance series. Woo! Going to read from the King James Version today. Now I've got uh, two different sets of scriptures. Going to start with uh, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 through 7. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt, sh shalt die and not live. Wow, great, great beginning. But we go on. Verse 2, Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect blameless faithfulness heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. He wept bitterly. And it came to pass, for Isaiah was gone out into the middle of court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver the, thee and the city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend the city for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. In verse 7, And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took, took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. I'm gonna skip over to the book of James. Uh, chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. And I want you to pay close attention to this. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And you can hear the song Prayers of the Righteous in the background. So I'm going to title this message Pray for Deliverance. And like I said, this is the uh, part. This is part four of, in the finale of my del Deliverance series. Gonna move on next week. And, uh, alright. The third and final thing that we must do to position ourselves for deliverance is to pray. That is to seek God's face. Prayer is the most powerful thing to do. Let's take a look at Hezekiah's bio biography for a moment. He was a king of Judah. He was actually one of the good ones. And there were a lot of bad ones in Israel. He was godly and he faithfully obeyed God. He walked in God's ways. He, his reign saw religious, many religious reforms. It saw the fall of pagan altars. It saw the ab 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 abolition of, of idolatry and the resurgence of God's altars. He was also a man who knows how to pray. And here's here's the proof. Gonna skip and go back to Second Kings. Gonna uh, go backwards into verse 19. Gonna uh, chapter 19, and we're gonna read 14 through 19. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of uh, at, of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest and between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and the earth. And earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, <coughs> which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations in their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Whew! What a, what a great prayer for deliverance. Could have used that as my text, but, but here we go. When the Assyrians became a threat to Jerusalem, Hezekiah hit the prayer room and he got a hold of God. When the enemy strikes, the wisest thing to do, anyone can do, is to go to the altar of prayer and pray. 
if Hezekiah was a, was a good king, why did God let him get sick? Now, I'm not going to get philosophical, but, but I believe there is a reason for everything, for every good thing and bad thing that happens to God's people. Now, I mean, look at Job. Even godly and righteous people are vulnerable to spiritual and physical sickness. Just because you are living for God does not mean you will not face sickness in your life. Unfortunately. <laughs> the best cure is to do what Hezekiah did. Pray. Once given the bad news of his upcoming death, Hezekiah turned right to God. He hit the prayer wall hard. Hezekiah reminded God of his faithfulness to him. Also reminding God... Reminding God's favor on those who walk upright. Hezekiah's prayer was bold and earnest, but not prideful at all. He was in desperation. Whew. Whoops. All right. Uh, lost my place. Alright. He, he just grabbed the horns of the altar and, and got God's attention. My computer lagged. Um, after God heard Hezekiah's prayer, he honored his servant's petition and granted Hezekiah 15 more years of life. What's more, he will defend Jerusalem from the threat of the Assyrian army as long as Hezekiah is alive. One last thing. God, through Isaiah, tested Hezekiah's obedience with the with the use of figs, though though Hezekiah was healed, but Isaiah added the uh, the figs. Now faith and prayer sometimes requires faith to take action in obedience. The book of Psalms has tons of prayers and within its pages. There is one passage that sticks out, however. And it's, uh, the Psalm 39, one of David's Psalms. And gonna read verse 12 and 13. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O oh, spare me, that I may recover strength. Before I go hence and be no more. Whew. And there were, I mean, those, these two verses in David's psalm contain several powerful prayers. Hear me. Listen to me. Don't ignore me. I am in need. Help me. David was another man who knew how to pray. He was the man after God's own heart. Now, I have three powerful testimonies to share with y'all that will really boost your faith. Whew. Now, number one, Sister Terry Spears dealt with a very, very deadly heart virus. I, I don't know what it was. It's very, very rare. And she dealt with it for 10 plus years. Everyone that's, had, that's ever had that heart virus is dead. But she is healed. She is healed. Now, what's her secret? She was a praying woman. She was a, she was faithful to God through her sickness. Woo! I mean, woo! Number two, br Brother Jeff Arnold was preaching at a congregation, and he just fell dead. Um, minutes later, he was revived. He is still going strong too. What's what happened there? The whole congregation prayed. When you have a unison of prayer, God can work many miracles. Whew, and I believe it. Number three. Now our our bishop, Brother Arnold Boffman, deals with a debilitating sickness that leaves him weak. And he has to walk with a walker. But last Sunday evening, God told his sister to tell him to walk around the sanctuary. Slowly but surely, he and others walked around the whole sanctuary. He felt a surge of strength afterwards. He was standing for quite, quite a bit of time. Whew. And he was unable to do so before. Now what is the key to that? He put his faith into action 
God spoke to the sister, and she, by faith, told pa um, Brother Boffman, and he, he put his faith into action through obedience to what God told him through, his, through the sister. He also had a big group of men praying for him uh, and with him all the way around the sanctuary. Whew. Now, I'm coming to my conclusion now. Powerful things happen when you pray. Prayer will unleash God and let him be who he already is. Prayer will break your chains. Prayer will cast the demons and spirits out of you. Prayer will take away your sickness, God willing. And things happen when you pray with faith and putting that faith into action. <clears throat> and gonna end my series with this. It is my prayer that this series on deliverance has blessed you. It's been a been a great four weeks, four messages. Now re I want to ju to just remember this. God is the one who delivers you. You can position yourself for deliverance through desire, through worship, and through prayer. God bless you all in Jesus' name.